Um, uh, you know, I, I, one of the things that I like the most about, I mean, that fascinates me, that, that it makes me love the humanitarian profession is that one of the principles simply is volunteer action, volunteer participation. So volunteers are essential for humanitarian uh, action. And uh, as a profession, that just makes me love it. So uh, I came here to talk a little bit about the Digital Humanitarian Network. Uh, it's an idea that became uh, a more of a developed idea and uh, that it, to stimulate more collaboration between volunteer entire communities and humanitarian organizations. Well, my name is Luis Capello, as you've seen. I'm a Brazilian fellow trying to design a, a public policies for the area of science and technology that are really efficient back at Harvard University. Uh, so, uh, I mean, as you well know here in this, in this audience, humanitarian response, at least the way I see it, is a synonymous of information overload. It's a lot of information, and, uh, and a lot of information that is changing the dynamic of, of humanitarian action, a lot of live information. And what I believe, it's, it's, uh, the question is the most important right now, it's how to collect and make sense of all this data, how to make decision makers able to make decisions that match these live streams and this dynamics and flow of information. So uh, I have to recognize that humanitarian organizations are really doing a hard work to adapt to this new scenario. They're hiring new people, they're, they're making new partnerships, they are, they're look, looking to create new innovative social media savvy programs. Uh, but at the same time, I also have to recognize that uh, it's, a, it's a really rough sea to navigate with such a, a tiny, tiny boat of resources. And so uh, I think the volunteer and time communities uh, thrive in this environment. They, they manage to, to create new tools, create new processes that challenge humanitarian organizations, and, and, and probably drive, uh, make the sector go forward just by this, uh, by this you know, clash of ideas. Uh, I think uh, right now it's important for us to, to uh, I think, stop questioning their, the reliability of their presence in humanitarian response and start wondering how can we effectively empower uh, the, these uh, volunteer and technical communities. So uh, this, this was the essence uh, that generated the digital humanitarian network. The idea that if we collaborate, if we engage more uh, the humanitarian organizations with the volunteer and technical communities, we can, we can improve humanitarian action as a whole, all the processes. So uh, it, it, it aims, the digital humanitarian works generally aims to, uh, to um, create a consortium, a, a big group of, of organizations, network groups, uh, that, that facilitates and reduces the collaboration costs between these two big groups. So I mean, in general terms, you have two huge groups. You have the VTCs, the volunteer and technical communities, and the humanitarian organizations. So if we manage to create a consortium that may uh, facilitate collaboration. We took a little uh, step forward and we created an activation, a simplified activation mechanism. Just a, you know, a tool to uh, generate dialogue. So uh, humanitarian organizations send an activation in. It's very generally triaged to make sure uh, nothing out of the scope is, is, is sent in. And uh, it's uh, forwarded to, him, to the VTCs. Forwarded along, we, we try to take a step forward and uh, we created a, a framework on, on how to engage with these communities for humanitarian organizations, how to, to deploy them, how to manage this, these activations. So uh, uh, it started in, in April the, this year, and we're very happy. And uh, soon after, we had the first members joining in. Now we, we sum up 10 members. But more excitingly, in July and uh, in August, we had our two first activations. So we had two first organizations coming in and activating the DH network. And, and that, was, it, that was fascinating. We could not expect that, uh, the, that OCHA and ICAPS would come with the requests that they came at the time. You know, first OCHA, uh, with their assessments team, came to, to the Edge Network and said, let's build a, a, a pre-crisis data. Let's build a country profile with, with volunteer and technical communities. I was like, wow, that's, that's an interesting challenge. We haven't seen that, uh, that happening in, in this context of, of the DH network, or it, it wasn't as common. And, and, and C uh, and ACAPs, I, they, I think they even took a bolder step. They say, you know, let's see if VTCs can be part of the formal assessments. You know, let's see if they can really be part of, of something that's more sustainable looking forward. So I think today, well, the DH network has uh, 
willing, uh, members willing to work together, a 24-hour uh, cycle activation process. And more importantly, they're, they're a very flexible community to adapt to the needs of the humanitarian uh, sector. So I think uh, right now the, uh, the question is uh, what's going to come next? What's the future of the DH network? What is the future of this collaboration mechanism? Is it to create uh, an advocacy uh, organization, uh, task making, uh, uh, a coordination uh, organization? Well, I, I, I really don't know. And I'm here, I think that's the main reason why I'm here, to, to ask you to join us, join us in the sessions tomorrow to figure out the, the future of this exciting new idea. Thank you very much.